Good evening and welcome to Sunset News on this beautiful Tuesday evening. As always, we bring you news, community stories, economics, weather, sports, and so much more. I am Glenora Shipura. Getting into the news tonight, the New Era reports that since 2021, 220 men have committed suicide in the Omusati region, official statistics show. During the same period, 57 women also committed suicide. In 2021, 46 men committed suicide, while in 2022, the number increased to 61. In 2023, the number went up to 75 men. So far this year, 38 men have reportedly committed suicide in the region. This was revealed by the Omusati Regional Namibian Police Commander, Commissioner Ishmael Basson, during the men's conference held at Otapi on Saturday. Here, men across the region gathered to share ideas, educate each other, and find amicable solutions to stop gender-based violence. They discuss issues such as rape, suicide, and murders. Basson indicated that men often do not speak up when they are being abused, but then they later become suspects. Moving on, the Namibian reports that local businesses fear they could be forced to close shop after a decision that employers have to pay employees pay as you earn tax refunds and not the government. Minister of Finance and Public Enterprises Ipumbushimi recently announced this move. Earlier this year, he announced tax relief measures that saw Namibians earning less than $100,000 million exempted from paying the pay as you earn taxes. Now, the tax threshold was raised from $50,000 million to $100,000 million. Black Businesses Leadership Network of Namibia Chairperson Eliphaz Simon criticized Shimi's stance yesterday. Moving on. Still with the Namibian, it reports that about 234 fishermen from the Iyalo Women Investment Group at Valvis Bay did not receive their full salaries for August. The employees were allocated to the company by the government under its Government Employment Redress Program, GERP, following cabinet directives after being unemployed since 2015. About 2,483 ex-fishermen were absorbed into the Haig and Horse macro subsectors through the program. The Iyalo Women Investment Group, a Haig quota rights holder, was allocated 1,880 tons of Haig to create employment for 235 ex-tracking fishermen, but is now unable to pay its employees full salaries because of a lack of funds. The employees were informed of the situation on the 21st of August. An agreement was, however, reached to pay them $2,000 million each until the company can pay the outstanding amount. The company also assured the group that they were bailed out by the government with an extra fishing quota to cater for payments until the end of the 2023 to 2024 season. In a statement released at Valvis Bay on Friday, Okapara Fisherman Chairman Gottfried Kuhanga said the workers were not satisfied. Our livelihoods depend on our salaries. The process has affected us very badly, he said. New Era reports that newly appointed French and Venezuelan ambassadors to Namibia aim to strengthen cooperation with a focus on trade, investment, cultural exchange and educational partnerships. The two ambassadors presented their letters of credence to President Nangolo Mbumba at State House yesterday outlining their respective countries' plans to deepen cooperation with Namibia, with Namibia rather, across various sectors. In a side interview at State House with New Era, French Ambassador Cecile Vigniao emphasized that her country seeks to enhance its partnership with Namibia, focusing on trade, investment, cultural exchange and educational partnerships. She highlighted the long-standing relationship between the two countries, dating back to Namibia's independence struggle in the 1980s. France supported Namibia's path to independence and our relations have developed smoothly and nicely, Vignia remarked. Now, despite this positive history, she stressed the need for further strengthening in several areas, including support for French companies in strategic sectors like water, renewable energy, agriculture, tourism and logistics. 
She also underscored the importance of cultural and educational exchanges, particularly through the Franco-Namibian Cultural Center and university partnerships. Ambassador Vignia expressed her desire to expand educational exchanges, recognizing the current limited exchange of students between France and Namibia. She aims to impl implement existing agreements to facilitate these exchanges, thereby enriching the educational landscape of both countries. That concludes our top stories. On the other side of the break, we take a look at our story of the day. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Welcome to Namibia, where adventure meets tranquility. With Enjoy, you have access to a wide range of accommodations to suit every traveler's taste and budget. Experience the finest dining and hospitality Namibia has to offer. Booking your dream accommodation is just a few clicks away with Enjoy. Join thousands of happy travelers who have trusted Enjoy for their Namibian getaway. Your gateway to unforgettable Namibian adventures. Visit us today at enjoy.my.na. Thank you for staying with Sunset News. We now get into our story of the day, swinging over to the coast. The Swakopmund Heritage Week kicked off earlier this week at the museum under the theme Culture is Community. Lynette van Nikerk, a community member of the Swakopmund Arts Association, shares what members of the public can expect throughout this week. Precious Ngitwa Napo was there and gave this report. Let's take a look. And to me, I believe it's very important for culture in a community and a community in culture. It is one of the vital things we need to protect our culture and we need to protect our community for a thriving, beautiful spot of mind. So what can you expect from us this year? We might have scaled down a bit with our events, but we have upped our game when it comes to glitz and glam. Yes, on Friday, the 20th of September, we will be bringing you for the first time ever a fashion show to the Swakopmund Museum, right here. Yes, three amazing fashion designers have been working continuously for the past few months to bring us a unique cultural fashion show. The three designers are Love Not Designs, Belinda is with us today, and K.E. Boss, Zabora, and Haleo Fashion Manu. So we promise you an absolutely amazing show. If you have not yet bought your tickets, please find Jessica by the NAR. Jessica's right there in the back. Buy your tickets. Yes, it's $150. I know you're all thinking of $150, but please take note that it does include light refreshments. So do not delay, get your tickets today. With this, I hope you all enjoy your Heritage Week 2024. It was put together with a lot of love, tears, and frustrations. <laughs> So please come and join us at the fashion show to celebrate. Kultuur is gemeenskap and gemeenskap is kultuur. Thank you very much. Moving on, we are still in the coast. The National Oral Health Awareness Week kicked off in Valvis Bay. After the break, we get into the story. Hmm. E-Ticket, your online ticket solution for events and event marketing, bringing you ease of mind and making sure that your event gets out there. Ben 
www.republicanes.com.na. Entries are now open for the second round of Republicanes Bridal Couple of the Year competition. Couples married between 1 June and 31 August have until 30 September of this year to enter the second round of the competition. Another one of the top 10 couples will be chosen from this pool to participate in the final taking place in May 2025. To better your chance of reaching the final, enter now! To enter, simply WhatsApp hashtag bridal2025 to 085-785-6231 and follow the on-screen instructions or scan this QR code. We now get into our community talk. The National Oral Health Awareness Week kicked off in Valvis Bay with Anna Jonas, the Regional Health Director of Erongo Region, delivering a keynote address on behalf of the Minister of Health. Frida Molotto was there and gave this report. Oral health is a cornerstone of general health. It influences our ability to eat, speak, and interact confidently, free from pain or embarrassment. But more than that, poor oral health can lead to serious health complications, including heart disease, diabetes, and respiratory infections. Therefore, maintaining good oral health is not simply about having a bright smile, but also about ensuring a healthy life. This advocacy led to the implementation of the Smiling School project, which was implemented countrywide and was later in incorporated into the school health program to streamline the service offered at schools with minimal interruption. Furthermore, this policy ensures that school children screened at schools and referred for dental treatment to the public health facilities. Hi, my name is Tovia Nekomba. I'm in grade six at Flamingo Primary School. And today I learned the importance of dental hygiene and the importance of brushing teeth because some people, most of the kids do not know how to brush their teeth. According to Economic News, Namibia has 170 billion Namibian dollars worth of investment projects in the pipeline. Stay, stay, stick around for this story on the other side of the break. Neopaints has established a 67-year Namibian legacy, creating personalized paint solutions that blend quality and innovation for the Namibian people. We pride ourselves in being a 100% Namibian-owned company, investing in our country and our people by employing and empowering true Namibians. With every brush stroke, Neo Paints commits to our quality guarantee and always delivering a coat of excellence. At Neo Paints, we always stay true to our country. We are as Namibian as you. Entries are now open for the second round of Republicanes Bridal Couple of the Year competition. Couples married between 1 June and 31 August have until 30 September of this year to enter the second round of the competition. Another one of the top 10 couples will be chosen from this pool to participate in the final taking place in May 2025. To better your chance of reaching the final, enter now!
to enter, simply WhatsApp hashtag bridal2025 to 085-785-6231 and follow the on-screen instructions or scan this QR code. Getting into our economic news, as we mentioned before the break, the Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board says the country is spearheading investment projects valued at over 170 billion Namibian dollars. NIPDB Chairperson and Chief Executive Officer Nangula Nelulu Wanja highlighted the importance of efficient public sector processes and a collaboration to accelerate the realization of investments and create jobs for Namibians. In total, the projects in our pipeline represent over 170 billion Namibian dollars in potential investment. The sooner we work together as a country and streamline processes in the public sector, the, week, the quicker we can realize the projects and create jobs for Namibians. This investment is crucial for driving economic growth and improving the livelihoods of Namibians, said Wanja. She pointed to a significant rise in foreign direct investment under NIPDB's leadership since its inception in 2021, despite the challenges posed by the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2023 alone, she said Namibia attracted approximately $43 billion in FDI with major contributions from the oil and gas sectors, along with Heineken's acquisition of Namibia breweries. In 2023, Namibia attracted roughly $43 billion in foreign direct investment, largely driven by sectors like oil and gas, as well as major transactions like Heineken's acquisition of Namibia's, Namibia's breweries. This demonstrates the positive shift we have seen in attracting investment into Namibia, under the Namibia Investment Promotion and Development Board's guidance, one just said. We now take a look at our financial indicators. The Namibian dollar trades against the British pound at 23.23, against the euro at 19.61, against the US dollar at 17.64, 2 Namibian dollars and 49 cents gets you one Chinese yuan. On the commodities market, gold and platinum went down, while copper and brand crude oil went up. Brand crude oil trading at 0.69%, going for 73 US dollars and 76 cents per barrel. In international news, the Indonesia parliamentary body approves higher spending for incoming government. We get into the story after the break. Welcome to Namibia where adventure meets tranquility. With Enjoy, you have access to a wide range of accommodations to suit every traveler's taste and budget. Experience the finest dining and hospitality Namibia has to offer. Booking your dream accommodation is just a few clicks away with Enjoy. Join thousands of happy travelers who have trusted Enjoy for their Namibian getaway. Your gateway to unforgettable Namibian adventures. Visit us today at enjoy.my.na. Getting into our international news, Indonesia's key parliamentary budget committee approved on Tuesday increased spending for the incoming government of President-elect Prabowo Sabianto, who is set to take office next month. The committee approved a 6% rise in spending to 236.2 billion US dollars versus an estimate of over 3 trillion rupiah in 2024, its chair said. The budget accommodates key programs of the new government, including a free meal policy for kids, which will cost 71 trillion rupiah, free rupiah, free health checkups, building hospitals, and renovating schools and food security initiatives. Prabowo sees the programs as necessary to help meet his target of lifting economic growth to 8% from 5%. The 2025 budget was designed to support an effective government transition, 
Said Abdullah, Said Abdullah, who told the parliamentary meeting. A wider parliamentary vote scheduled for Thursday, September 19th to approve the committee's decision is still needed, though it usually endorses the decision. The country's 2025 fiscal deficit was maintained at 2.53% of GDP, smaller than this year's outlook at 2.70%, as revenues are expected to rise by 7.2% to over 3 trillion rupiah next year. The approved budget assumes the economy will grow 5.2% next year, just above 5.1% in the current year's outlook, while inflation is expected to be maintained at 2.5% for 2025. Pra Bowo will start his five-year term on the 20th of October. That concludes our international news. We now take a look at the weather predictions. Connection. It's in the human touch, the feeling of belonging. It inspires us and empowers us, creates clarity from complexity. It starts new conversations, unlocks the power of advice, and makes an impact on your life. At Alex Forbes, we pioneer insight to provide you with advice that connects your decisions of today to your impact tomorrow. Let's take a look at the weather predictions for Namibia for tomorrow. The capital city can expect a minimum of 13 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 31 degrees Celsius with sunny weather conditions. Oshuarongo can expect a minimum of 16 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 33 degrees Celsius with party cloudy conditions. Oshakati can expect a minimum of 18 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 36 degrees Celsius also with party cloudy conditions. Handys Bay can expect a minimum of 10 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 16 degrees Celsius with party cloudy conditions, while Arams Valley can expect a minimum of 13 degrees Celsius and a maximum of 29 degrees Celsius with sunny weather conditions. We will now head over to the sports desk bro proudly brought to you by SportsRep. Good evening and welcome to the Sunset New Sports section, courtesy of Sport Rep. This is Jesse Jackson Kauraitha. Sources in the Namibia Football Association have indicated that the club licensing process that has begun in Namibia will likely delay the start of the upcoming season, among other issues which need to be ironed out. Clubs have already started submitting documents required to be licensed by the Confederation of African Football. Sport Rep, however, understands that the process will not be a quick one due to the challenges many football clubs face in Namibia. Owning a football stadium are among the problematic requirements in order for some football clubs to be licensed. Most football clubs in Namibia do not have such infrastructure in place and many probably use lease agreements to have themselves licensed to play. Sport Rep last week reported that several clubs intend dragging their feet on kicking a ball until they are given audience at the negotiation negotiation table. The clubs allegedly feel that they are being excluded from matters that has influence on their future, stating that the current NFA leadership is operating without a transparent policy. Senior NFA officials were not prepared to comment on the matter by the time a sport rep went to print. The ICC 2024-2026 Cricket World Cup League 2 series resumed yesterday with a one-day international ODI triangular tournament between Namibia, the United Arab Emirates and the USA in Vinduk, while Canada, Nepal and Oman face each other at the same time in Ontario, Canada. Bernard Schultz, Namibia's 33-year-old slow left-arm orthodox spinner, played in his 50th one-day international yesterday, following his debut on 27 April 2019 against Oman in Vantuk. The Rachel Eagles had a rusty start, betting first at the Trasco United field, reaching 199 runs for 9 wickets in 50 overs before the USA's 200-4 in 41.3 beat them by 7 wickets. That brings us to the end of tonight's sports section. Good evening.
And with that, we've come to the end of the broadcast. Do make sure you join Sunset News on Facebook, on all the NMH platforms on weekdays, as well as on our website, whatup2.com. Sunset News screens on DSTV Channel 285 and GoTV Channel 25, Monday to Thursday from 7.30 p.m. to 8 p.m. I am Glenora Shipura. Don't end your day without us.